Hey guys, it's Charles of Premium B. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how we can create this holographic sticker effect in After Effects. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. All right guys, before we jump over to After Effects and get started, I do wanna mention that the holographic textures that I'm gonna be using are from the Holographic Loops freebie pack that's available on Premium Beat. It includes several different animated holographic textures. I'll have a link where you can download that freebie pack on the blog post, and that link will be in the description of this video. I also wanna mention that I'm gonna have the project file with everything I create in this tutorial available on the blog post as well, and I'm gonna include a few extra freebies and assets that we can use to kind of finesse the look of these stickers. All right guys, Let's go ahead and jump over to After Effects. All right guys, let's start by creating a new composition. I'm just gonna have this be a 1920 by 1080 composition, 24 frames per second. I'll have it be about five seconds long. I'm just gonna call it Sticker. And go ahead and click OK. Now we need to create our sticker shape. And for this first one, I'm just gonna do a round sticker. I'm actually gonna use a solid layer. So I'm just gonna right click over here and do a new solid. And just to keep it simple, I'm gonna have it be 1080 by 1080, so perfectly square and go ahead and click OK. And then with that selected, let's come over here to the Mask tool, and I'm gonna come down to the Ellipse tool and just double click on it, and it'll automatically create a circle mask. That's why we created that square solid. If I turn on the mask visibility, we can see that here. And that's just gonna be the shape for our sticker. Now I'm actually gonna hit S with that selected for the scale, and I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. It's not quite as big. And now for the holographic texture of the sticker, I'm gonna use one of the free holographic loops. Again, that's included with that holographic loops freebie pack. So I've got one of those over here. I'm gonna use this magic blue textured one. I'm just gonna drag that in. And I'm just gonna place that below our solid layer. And what we need to do here is come over to track mat. If you don't see that, just hit F4 on the keyboard. And that'll toggle the switches. So on our texture for the track mat, I'm just gonna set that to be alpha mat. And that will go ahead and mat that to our circle shape. And if you want, you can also resize the texture. If you wanna see more or less of the texture there, kind of of the pattern. And I can go ahead and scroll through this and kind of see what that looks like. Kind of giving us that holographic sticker effect. Now this is gonna be the front side of our sticker. So I'm gonna add some text to this. I'll select the text tool. So I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna type in 100% fresh. And I'm just gonna reposition this. I'm gonna resize this here. But I'm gonna go up here to the line. And I can align this to the center. And just to make this look a little bit better, I'm actually going to resize the 100% so it's just as wide as the fresh there. So I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit and then realign that. And you guys can use any color you want on your text. I just like using black because it gives me a nice contrast, but white can also look really good as well. But again, you can use any other color you want to. I'm gonna stick with black again, just because it gives you some nice contrast with that. Now that we have the front side of our sticker set up, I'm gonna pre-compose all these. So I'm gonna select the text and hold shift and just select all the layers here and come up here to the layer. We're gonna select pre-compose. And I'm just gonna call this sticker front. And go ahead and click OK. Now let's go ahead and create the back side of our sticker. And the way we're gonna do that is over here in the project panel. Let's go ahead and select that sticker front composition that we just created. And just come here to edit and come down to duplicate. Then on that duplicate copy we just created, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit enter on it. Let's go ahead and name it sticker back. And then I'm just gonna double click into that composition. That way we can open it up. And in here, let's go ahead and delete our text. And then I'm also gonna delete the holographic texture I've got there, that blue one. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in a new texture. And I like to use this number three, the silver textured two. I'm just gonna drag it into the composition, place it below the solid. And then for the track mat, I'm gonna set it again to be alpha mat. And I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit here so we can see more of the texture on the sticker. So now we've quickly created the back side of our sticker. I'll go ahead and close this up. Let's navigate back into our main composition, the sticker composition which has our sticker front pre-comp already in it. And now we can go ahead and apply the main effect for our sticker animation, and that's gonna be the CC page turn effect. So up here in the effects and presets, let's type in CC page turn. It's under distort. I'm just gonna drag and drop this onto that sticker front composition. And the nice thing about CC page turn is we have a lot of different effects controls that we can change up here. But the main one is the fold position. You can see this little crosshairs indicator, I can click that. As I move that around here in the frame, you can see it kind of bends the sticker upward. 
And you also have the ability to change kind of which area of the sticker bends up. You can see here by default, it's on bottom right corner. And that's the one I'm typically gonna use because I think it looks the best. But if you wanna change this to one of the other angles, you can go ahead and feel free to do that as well. One of the first things you may notice is the backside of the sticker currently is kind of transparent. We can go ahead and fix that with back opacity here. Just type in 100%. A couple other settings I want to mention briefly are the light direction. You can see we have this kind of light shining on the edge of the sticker there. If you want to adjust that, you can go ahead and change that as well. And the next one is the fold radius. And the fold radius is important because it adjusts the bend of the sticker. You can see kind of how it folds over itself here. Currently, the default is 50. If you go ahead and increase this, you can see it kind of makes it a little bit more of a broad bend on the sticker. And if I set this down to something like 30, that's usually what I like to use. It gives you more of a sleek kind of flat profile on the bend there kind of more for a smooth reveal. I kind of like how that looks. So I'm gonna leave that set at 30. Now let's go ahead and keyframe the animation of our sticker. So I'm gonna select the fold position. I'm gonna move it up here to the top left corner. And with my current time indicator at the very beginning of the composition, let's go ahead and create a keyframe for the fold position. And I'm gonna move down about two seconds like this kind of reveals slowly. And I'm just gonna move this fold position down to the bottom left until the sticker is flat. And if I hit U on the keyboard, we can see those keyframes. And I'll go ahead and do a quick RAM preview of this. If you want, you could always apply easy ease or smoothing to the keyframes here. I'm gonna leave them currently at the default because I think it looks nice as is. But one of the cool things about the CC page turn effect is we can actually isolate the front and the back side of the sticker. So over here in the render settings, you can see we can change this to be the back page and that will just render the back side of the sticker or we can change it to be the front page. And this is what's gonna allow us to basically split up our sticker to have a front and back side, each side of them be different, and we can apply different effects to each side, and it's just gonna help us later on with our animation. So on the sticker front composition here, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on the front page only, so we can see that there. So now let's navigate to the project panel, and let's select our sticker back composition, and go ahead and add it into our main composition here above the sticker front. And now what we wanna do is we wanna copy the CC page turn effect that we've already keyframed and paste it onto the sticker back. So I'm gonna select the sticker front, come up here to effects controls. I'll just go ahead and select CC page turn, go to edit, and then go ahead and go to copy. Now let's select our sticker back. I'm gonna go ahead and go to edit and paste. And when I do that, I've already made a mistake, but I did this intentionally here on this example because I wanna show you how easy this is to do. When I paste it over the settings to the sticker back, you can see the stickers now, if I go ahead and scroll through here, it's not in alignment and it's not kind of revealing itself correctly. And that's because the current time indicator wasn't at the very beginning of the composition. So if I hit U here, we can see those keyframes are out of alignment. And that's what you don't wanna do, but you might accidentally do that and wonder what in the world's going on. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z to undo that. And I'm gonna move the current time indicator back to the very beginning of the composition now. And I've already copied again those settings. So with the sticker back selected, come up here to edit and paste. So you should see something like this, and this kind of indicates everything is in alignment. But now we need to go ahead and adjust the settings for the sticker back. So with it selected under the renderer here, let's go ahead and change this to be the back page. And when we do that, it's gonna be a little confusing because now we're gonna see the sticker front, but on the back page, and that's not what we want. But because of the way we copied and pasted that setting on the back page right here, it's defaulting to the sticker front. So go ahead and just change this to be sticker back. And now that will put the back side of the sticker so that it looks correct. And if we go ahead and scroll through this now, we'll see a different side on the back and the front. So just to recap that really quickly, on the sticker front, with it selected here on the CC page turn, just make sure the renderer is on the front page, and then on your sticker back pre-comp here with the CC page turn effect, make sure it's set to back page, and make sure that the back page is set to the sticker back. And that really is the basics for setting up our holographic sticker animation. Now I wanna show you guys how we can create another sticker design. So I'm just gonna come up here to the project panel. Let's go ahead and create a new composition. And I'm just gonna call this sticker two. And I'm gonna use the same composition settings as before. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. For this one, I wanna show you guys how you can kind of create that star shape or almost like jagged edge shaped sticker. And we're gonna do this with a shape layer actually. So with nothing selected here, we're coming to the ellipse tool. I'm gonna to hold, I'm gonna select the star tool. Then I'm just gonna click and hold and create a star shape here. And you can really create it any size, anywhere. So I'm just gonna grab that. Let's go ahead and align this up. So I've just got the align panel up here and I'm gonna align it to the middle. And we can rescale this and make other changes to this in just a second. So what we wanna do is with that layer selected, just go ahead and toggle down the settings and under Polystar here, we're gonna select the Polystar path. And then for the points, we can increase this. So I'm gonna bump this up to like 18. 
And then for the inner radius, go ahead and bring this out. So we just kind of get that stereotypical kind of jagged edge sticker effect there. Then if I hit S for scale, I can go ahead and scale this up a little bit. And we'll just align this back again to the middle if it gets offset there at all. So now we have like that jagged edge pattern for our sticker. And I'm gonna grab a holographic loop here to use as our texture. The one I'm gonna use for this one is the TCG hollow number two. And this is kind of emulating a trading card game texture. So I'm just gonna drag that in and place it below my shape layer. And with our holographic texture, let's come over here to track mat and again, set that to be alpha mat. Now we can see that's projecting that onto our sticker. And I'm gonna scale the holographic layer down a little bit so we can kind of get a little more detail on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and scroll through this and you can kind of see that holographic texture there. This has kind of a starred pattern on it. Now I wanna show you guys how we can create some text and have it kind of repeat all across the sticker here like I did with the preview example. And the way we do that is we need to create another composition specifically for our text. So let's come over here to the composition. We're gonna create a new composition. And I'm just gonna call this my text comp. And for the size, you're gonna to wanna to adjust this for the size of your text specifically, but I'll just kind of give you a broad example here. So I'm gonna set this to be 1200 by 460. And we want everything else to kind of be the same as our main composition. And go ahead and click OK. And as I set this up, you'll kind of understand what's going on. I'm gonna turn on transparency there so we can kind of see everything easier. And I'm gonna select the text tool and I'm just gonna type in here, let's type buy one to free. And I'm just going to reposition this now. I'm gonna align this to the center. And I'm gonna adjust the sizing on this a little bit. So currently it's at 250, I'm gonna bump this down to 220. And what we wanna have here is we wanna have a little space between the top and the bottom and the left and the right because we're gonna use an effect to repeat this. And you're gonna to wanna to have a little bit of a gap there, that way it's easier to read it. But now that we've got this set up, let's come back over to our sticker two composition. And I'm gonna select that text comp. Let's just drag it in and place it above everything here. And what I can do is hit S for scale on that layer. We're gonna scale it down so about the size you want it to be. And we're gonna use an effect called CC Repetile to repeat this. Let me just go ahead and bring this up a little bit here so you can see this. So in the effects and presets, I'm gonna type in CC Repetile. And I'm gonna drag that effect onto my text comp. And then we can just leave this on the default tiling here. So let's go ahead and expand this over. You can see what that's doing. I'm gonna set each of these to be 3000. And that is going to repeat that text over and over again, kind of just off the sticker. And that's what we want. Now you can adjust the scale of your text still here. If I come down here to the scale, you can make it bigger or smaller, depending on how much of the pattern you want it to be. If you make it too small and you can kind of see it cuts off here, just expand this even more. I'm gonna set this back to like 20%. Another thing that looks pretty cool is you can kind of give it a little bit of an angle. So I'm gonna hit R for rotation there on that. I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit. I think it looks pretty neat. Now, if we actually turn on transparency, you're gonna see this actually goes off the edge of the sticker. So we need to duplicate our shape layer. So with it selected, I'm gonna hit Control D, Command D on a Mac. Let's go ahead and move this above our text comp. And then with our text comp selected for the track mat over here, just go ahead and change it to be alpha mat. And that will go ahead and mat that to the shape of the sticker. So now you guys can see how I set this up. And then everything from here, we're just gonna repeat the same things we did before, where I would go ahead and pre-compose all of this here. So with all these layers selected, go to layer and then pre-compose. And we'll just call this sticker to front and go ahead and click OK. And then I would just come back over here to the project panel and duplicate that sticker to front, make a backside and go ahead and continue with the animation like we did on our first example. I already have a finished version of this. I wanna go ahead and show you guys. So I'm gonna double click in here. So you can see we've got the front and the back here. And if I dive into the backside composition, you can see it's just the same thing with that matted to the shape for the back texture. And then I went ahead and animated this so we can see this, but that's how that would work. And I just won't go ahead and walk through all that again, just cause I already showed that with the first sticker. But now I wanna show you guys a few ways you can finesse the look of your stickers and really customize them even more and really develop the look. So the first thing I wanna show you guys is how you can actually add a little bit of a shadow to this, basically on the sticker as this is folding over. This is pretty cool because we have these two layers separated into a front and a back. So on our back composition here, the back part of the sticker, I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. Let's come over to effect and come down here to perspective. We're gonna select drop shadow. If I zoom in here a little bit closer, you're gonna see what's happening. So we have our drop shadow and right now the angle is not correct. You can see it's 
pointing way down. So if I go ahead and rotate this back, you can now kind of see that shadow edge appearing. Now what's funny about this is, I know that this light direction here is negative 60 because we can see that here on the light direction of the CC page turn effect. So I'm just gonna set this direction for this shadow to be negative 60. And now we'll go ahead and align that up perfectly kind of for the angle. Now one thing I do wanna show you though is with the distance over here, if I go ahead and increase this, you're gonna see kind of the flaw we get with this. And that is because it's only a drop shadow of the backside of the sticker and it doesn't continue on. So it actually cuts off. So obviously that doesn't really look correct if we left that kind of as is, looks a little bit wonky there. So what we actually wanna do with the distance here is set this to be all the way at zero. And what we wanna control is just this softness. So if I increase the softness, you can see it gives us a little bit of kind of a soft shadow effect, almost like an ambient occlusion type effect there. If I go ahead and toggle this on and off, you can see the difference. But that's a nice way you can add a little bit of extra shading to the animation. You can increase the opacity here if you wanna make it a little bit darker. You can kind of see how that works. Again, it's something you don't really notice until you kind of turn it on and off. You can kind of see the difference there that, that creates. Now let's take a look at the way we can make the stickers look a little bit thicker so they kind of stick off the background. So I'm gonna come back over to our first example and I'm gonna select the sticker front composition and we're gonna come up here to effect. We're also gonna go down to perspective again and we're gonna select bevel alpha. And if I zoom in here on this edge, you're gonna see, we get a little bit of light difference here on the edge and it makes the sticker again, just kind of look like it's sticking up off the surface a little bit more. You don't wanna increase this too high because it can look a little bit weird. You can kind of see that there. I'm gonna set this on something like three. I find that to be a nice value just to give us a slight edge on this and it makes it look a little bit more realistic. And if we go ahead and scroll back over this, we need to apply this bevel alpha to the front and the back. So I'm just gonna copy that effect. So control C and then on the sticker back here, control V to paste that. And you can see we get that bevel on each side of the sticker. I think it looks pretty cool. Kind of how that animates on, just giving it a little bit more depth and it makes it look a little bit more realistic. Let me show you guys another example I've got here of this 8-bit sticker. So obviously you can use this sticker effect with anything like logos or icons. You can see I have this 8-bit icon here and I'll actually include this with the project file. You can see in the extras, I have some icons that were kind of created in one of our voxel tutorials. So you can use those if you don't have any logos. But you can see I've applied the same animation to this and you can kind of see I've also got kind of a holographic texture on the actual icon itself. So let me go ahead and kind of break this down how this was created. So I've got a back and a front side here for the sticker. So let's go ahead and dive into the front side. And you can see the basics of how this was set up is I just started out with the Game Boy icon and then I just alpha matted a holographic texture of that. So that's what we get this. And then I duplicated the Game Boy icon. And what I did was I experimented with the blending modes. So again, this will be set to normal. I just changed this to be hard light. That was the one I found that looked the best. And it kind of lets some of that holographic texture shine through while retaining some of the color. And so it kind of gives you like a holographic sticker effect there. Then I also knew I wanted to have a white border expanding out from the edge of the sticker. A lot of stickers kind of have that white border. So let me show you guys how I created that. I just added another copy of the Game Boy icon down below everything. Let me turn that on. Let me go ahead and solo this too so you can just kind of see what's happening. And the way we're gonna expand this out and this works again with anything you wanna use this on. We're gonna use the Minimax effect. So under effects and presets, I'm gonna type in Minimax. And you're gonna see that there, it's under channel. I'm just gonna apply this to my icon. And what we need to do is come over here to the channel and we need to change this to be alpha and color. And if we go ahead and expand this, you're gonna see it's expanding out the edge. Don't worry about this stuff happening in the middle. We're gonna change that in just a second. But you can see how this expands out. So if I go ahead and unsolo this now, you can see we're expanding out the edge of our icon. So I just expanded that edge out a little bit. I think I had set it to five originally, but obviously you can notice it's currently gray. So a quick way we can change the color of that is we're just gonna apply a fill effect to this. So under effect, come down here to generate, we're gonna select fill, and I'm just gonna change this to be a white color. Go ahead and click okay. And that's how you can create those white borders around really any shape you want to, if you wanna kinda of create a white border around whatever sticker you're creating. Jumping over to another example I've got here. This is an example I've got where I actually don't have the sticker animate on. I just kind of left that fold there and I'm just letting it kind of loop with that holographic background. This is a pretty cool look as well. So it's something else you guys may want to try. Finally, I want to show you guys another extra that's included with the project file for this. And that's how you can kind of create and customize your own patterns. So I've got one of the holographic backgrounds here in my composition. And in the extras of the project file, you're going to see I have this folder set up for patterns. And this has some of the patterns that I used when I created the holographic loops pack initially. 
And some of these were patterns I didn't use actually in that, but you guys can use these and kind of customize and create even more patterns and different things like that. So I'm gonna grab this pattern four. I'm just gonna add it in. Let's go ahead and just scale this up a little bit so it goes all the way to the edge. So you can see we have these hearts here. So let me select one of the other holographic loops over here. I'm gonna select a gold one. It's gold textured. And I'm just gonna set that below the pattern. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to be an alpha mat. So much like we did with the sticker, this is one way you can kind of create a different looking pattern here on this. If you wanna combine multiple holographic patterns together. Now what I actually prefer is another way of doing this. So I'm actually gonna select that gold texture and delete it. And on this pattern, let's go ahead and turn it back on for visibility. And we wanna make it in its own adjustment layer. So you can kind of see this half black and white circle. Go ahead and click that. And when we do that, the pattern is gonna disappear. But let's come up here to effect. And under distort, we're gonna select the transform effect. And then let's go over to scale and just scale this up a little bit. And now you can see the heart starting to reveal themselves. And if we scroll through here, you can see it gives us a nice kind of holographic pattern with those hearts. And of course you could change this out with any of those other patterns that are included in the project file. So definitely feel free to use those patterns to help customize whatever stickers you guys are gonna create. All right guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was definitely a fun one to make. Be sure to download that freebie pack and the project file from the blog post. And be sure to subscribe to the Premium Beat YouTube channel. We have several other tutorials and some other freebies coming out very soon. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.